Hello and thank you for watching. You're about to witness firsthand how quick and how easy a hacker can compromise your computer and infect you with Trojans and ransomware. The purpose of this video is to show you from the attacker's perspective what they see and what they can do. On the right hand side here is our victim's computer. It is a fully patched and updated Windows 10 system. As you can see, Security Center shows no actions are needed, all green check marks, and this is running Windows 10 Professional. Uh, eight, uh, 20 H2, which is the most update version. The attacker is running Kali Linux, which is here on the left hand side. The hacker's already been configured and is waiting for a connection back. The hacker has sent an email to the victim, as seen here, and the victim is simply going to click and run what is attached here, which in this case is a Word document. Now, the victim computer here is running Office 2021, as seen here, also fully updated and patched. And on the left-hand side here, if you keep an eye on it, you're going to see what's going to happen. As this Office document opens up, now stuff just started happening on the left-hand side here. And you can see down in the bottom left corner here, this is the IP address of the victim. And if the attacker runs the command IP config, you can see that they are seeing the exact same IP address and host name of the system. So the attacker has successfully gained access to this computer through a Word document and there were no alerts, no detections whatsoever. That's how easy it is. Now, the next steps that the hacker will need to do is to be able to maintain access. We call this persistence. And then they also need to get their ransomware on the computer. So the hacker has written up some commands here that they're going to go ahead and paste in to the command prompt here that they've got access to. And this is downloading all of these different files. And once these files finish downloading, they're, this is going to allow the attacker to maintain their access by uh, every time, even if the computer gets restarted. In this case, what they're doing is they're uh, backdooring the Google Chrome. And now they just made the uh, executable uh, and all of the things they just downloaded hidden. So it's much harder from a forensic perspective to be able to find it. And now they are starting to download the malware. All right. Now, at this point, uh, it looks like actually there was a mistype here. Let me go ahead and correct the spelling here. It is now called this. Let's try that one more time. There it goes. All right, that's running now. So now what I wanted to show is how the persistent connection works and also what the attacker can, can have access to. So in this case, in the documents, you can see there's some documents here. There's a you know file called bank account number with a bank account amount. Keep, keep that in mind because what we're going to do here is we're going to just double click Google Chrome to simulate uh, the other backdoor firing off. And as you can see, it did. It's coming over a different connection. And then you're going to see Google Chrome will open up normal. So no pop-ups, no warnings, nothing at all that would give an indication that there was a problem. As you can see, Security Center still says all is well. And we'll go ahead and minimize this. And we'll go back here to Google Chrome. And it's Google Chrome. You know, so if we do a Google search on, let's say, you know, cars, everything is running as intended. Now, this is a little bit slower system, which is uh, one reason why it's running a little slow. It doesn't have many resources. It is a virtual machine. But as you can see, it is Google Chrome. It, it, it is returning what you would expect to see if you did a Google search on that. And if you close out Google Chrome, we still have the connection. Now, what I wanted to show you was if we go into, the, let's change the directory into the documents, we can see everything that's in the documents here. And the attacker can simply do something like this. And now they can read all the contents in the document as well. So, and the victim is no wiser that something has happened, that there's something on the system or someone on the system watching. So at this point, we've got the ransomware started. It is running in the background. The ransomware is going to be doing a few things. It's going to be grabbing username and passwords out of memory, scraping a pro process called LSAS. It's going to uh, start vulnerability, or excuse me, uh, uh, port scanning. 
It's going to look for other systems on the network. It's going to look for systems on other networks. And then it's going to try to do some uh, lateral movement by connecting into those other systems using the credentials that it was able to get from this system. This system is joined to a domain. So this does simulate a business uh, computer in a business environment with multiple systems. Um, and there are some exploits that it's going to try as well. Um, they are safe exploits, meaning it's not going to fire something off that could potentially crash the system or lock it up or hang it up in this particular case. Now, we could do that, um, but in this example, we're, we're going to uh, do safe exploits and see if the system's uh, vulnerable to any of those. And since it's fully patched and updated, uh, it's not going to find any vulnerabilities to exploit, but it is going to be able to scrape memory and grab uh, credentials that way. So. Um, this ransomware will also then, most importantly, encrypt all the files in the documents that I've specified, and you'll see what that looks like. And so at this point, the attacker has full access to the system and the network, and I'm going to go ahead and pause it while we wait for the ransomware process to finish propagating through the network, and we'll pick it up right after it's finished. All right. We have completed all of the ransomware encryption. Uh, the last step is to build the actual ransom file. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. We're going to just echo in all of this text here. Like so. Perfect. All right. So now the victim now sees a readme file on their desktop. If they open it up, here's what they see. All your files have been ransomwared. Please send pizza and beer. Now, the reality is, if this was a real life ransomware attack, uh, this is where they'd be demanding Bitcoin. They would give you a link to uh, figure out exactly how much it would cost. They send you to a chat room, basically, where you upload a file. And at that point, uh, you'll get told how much and how to pay it. So hope you all enjoyed uh, this uh, little demonstration. Um, I would like to show a little bit more details uh, behind the scenes of what we are waiting to complete. So going back here, you can see the center system here. Uh, it, this is the system that we started with that we sent the document to. And the gray arrow uh, going outbound here uh, is to the attacker box. The red arrows are the systems that we were able to connect into by stealing the credentials of the one system and abusing that trust, and we were able to connect into others. Uh, you can see, you know, there's different IP addresses on these systems, and then there were a couple others that we were able to identify by scanning, but we did not try to access them. Um, the overall report shows a little bit more details and we can see here are the files that were all encrypted. Um, here are the different systems that we were able to get access to. So I hope you all enjoyed uh, everything here. We, um, we, we did try uh, a couple different type of attacks. Not all of them did work, um, but uh, you know, at this point, as you can see, you cannot rely solely on a single defensive mechanism, um, you know, such as antivirus or just a firewall. And so Lockhart Security specializes in cybersecurity, both defensive and offensive solutions. It's one thing uh, to have uh, security in place. It's another to make sure that it's actually working as expected. And that's where we come in to verify and validate controls. So I hope you enjoyed what we were able to show here today in the comments uh, section, feel free to ask any questions you might have or any suggestions on future videos that you might like. Um, do check us out at lockerdsecurity.com for more information, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.